So Adafruit is a really cool company that um, makes a bunch of like microcontroller boards and robotics things and accessories and tools that are really useful for like anyone who's like a tinkerer and likes to build electronics and play with this kind of stuff. They're a great place to find all of those kind of things. And they also have really great educational resources. So they make a lot of guides and things that anyone who's like trying to learn this kind of thing can use. And one of the things they made was this language called CircuitPython. And they have like a whole walkthrough about how to start using Raspberry Pi Pico and how to start using CircuitPython with it. So this is kind of the guide that I'm going to follow, at least to get started. I'm going to hold down the boot select or boot SEL. But right there, that little white button, it has boot SEL right there so i need to hold down that button as i um, plug it into my pc so i'm going to hold it down and plug it in and now it's recognizing it i can let go right here i have this new e drive that has rpi rp2 on it um and that is the USB drive of my Raspberry Pi Pico. I am going to go ahead and install CircuitPython on it. So it's pretty easy to do. Once you just download this file right here from the circuitpython.org site, then you just need to drag that UF2 file um, onto the that drive. You see that I have this CircuitPython um, UF2 file. I'm just going to drag that onto that E drive. Give it a second. And now it goes away and it'll come back in just a second. Boom. And now instead of that RPI RP2 drive, now we have a drive that lists as CircuitPi. And that is my Raspberry Pi Pico that now has CircuitPython installed on it. And it has a, I'm just opening it up bad for now. Um, it has a file that is on it right now that all it does is print out hello world. The way these devices work, you're going to have a code.py file. And anytime you plug in your Raspberry Pi Pico, it's going to automatically execute that code.py. So whatever you need your Raspberry Pi Pico to do, you put it in that code.py file. Okay, so now we can actually start writing some code and getting it to execute on our Raspberry Pi Pico. And um, so we need a editor, and there are tons of options out there for uh, text editors and IDEs and all that. Um, for this project, I am going to use one called Thani which is, it's a very simple, basic text editor slash IDE, but it works pretty well with a uh, circuit Python. So you can go to the interpreter and there's like a bunch of different options of like what kind of language you're using and we're using circuit Python. So we're going to select that. And then um, we're plugging our device in through USB. So we're gonna um, select that as the port. I have my Raspberry Pi Pico plugged in, it detects it. So if I want to run this code.py, it just printed out hello world right there. So now we have our Raspberry Pi Pico working and we can try to actually like put some stuff in this code.py or py to execute. So on our Raspberry Pi Pico, we have a few things built in and one of them is this right here in the corner an led that is a green led so this right here is a very simple little script that we can try to put on our code.py file and if it if it works correctly, then 
it should turn on our LED. So let's try it. Go back to our editor. We're going to delete that. So all this is doing is it imports the board and like these little libraries so it knows like what it's talking to. And then it just says while true, um, led.value equals true. So I believe if I run this, then that LED should turn on. There we go. Our LED is now on. And because this is in a while loop, this will keep going forever until we like turn it off or unplug it or something breaks because it's going forever. That's what a while true loop does. But if we click stop, now it goes off.